Hello everyone, my name is Kitty and I'm here today to share with you how I made this Bridgerton inspired dress. And of course, thank you so much to everyone who has been so patient while I waited for fabric to be delivered. Of course, with the current lockdown, getting materials has been a little bit tricky. So thank you everyone for being so patient while we waited. For the design of this dress, I wanted it to have a few key elements that I see in other Daphne's dresses. For example, I wanted the bodice to have the double dart. I wanted there to be puff sleeves. I wanted the skirt to be smooth in the front and taper out to a full bottom, as well as the pleats in the back. I also wanted the bodice front and side piece to just be one single piece. And I just did a lot of tinkering with a pattern I had made for an Emma dress until I found a shape that I was happy with. There is of course a PDF pattern down below and you can use that to make your own dress or perhaps just a jumping off point. Um, something else to keep in mind is that you can make this dress with two different types of skirt. This dress has a skirt made out of four kind of tapered rectangles, but I will also show you how to make a skirt out of two half circles. There are definitely pros and cons to both designs and I'll kind of go over them in this video. But like I said, the pattern is down below. I am so excited to share this process with you. So let's get started. To get started, I think it's important to first decide what kind of skirt you would like on the bottom of your dress. The skirt on the left is made out of two half circles and so it is much more full on the bottom. Whereas the skirt on the right is made out of four tapered rectangle shapes and so there isn't as much fullness on the bottom. However, they do have very different shapes and they drape a little bit differently. And I think some of Daphne's dresses mirror one style of skirt and some dresses mirror the other style. The biggest difference between the two is how much fabric is used. The dress on the left uses about seven yards of fabric, whereas the dress on the right uses about three and a half to four yards of fabric. A few other notable differences between the dresses is that the dress on the left has a cuff on the bottom of the sleeve and hooks and eyes for a back closure, whereas the dress on the right doesn't have a back closure due to the fact that the fabric has a little bit of stretch to it, and I just added elastic to the bottom of the sleeves for that scrunched puff effect. Now I'm quickly going to show you how I drape this pattern, which may help you make any adjustments you might want. I of course started with this very simplistic kind of drawstring bodice and I tinkered with it and sort of figured out how I would like the darts to fit and reshape the neckline. Once I was kind of happy with that idea, I sort of fine tuned it to make more of a fitted bodice and again worked on placing those darts. So as you can see, the front and side of the bodice is just one piece. So then I created a sleeve that would work with it and the back seam of the sleeve would match that back side seam of the bodice. And this is kind of what it looked like and how it should lie together. That long skinny part should wrap towards the front. For materials, I will be using seven yards of this crepe backed satin. And I have to say that while the color and the drape was very nice to it, it was extremely fussy to work with. It was constantly puckering and just like little tedious issues throughout. So do kind of keep that in mind when you're choosing your fabric. I also used a matching thread and a light blue color and then selected my back closure. For my dress, I used hooks and eyes, but you of course could choose buttons, a zipper, ribbon ties, or some other sort of back closure. Just keep in mind that this will affect how much room you cut or add to the center back of your dress. You may need a little extra room for buttons or you might want it closer together. For cutting into any of your nice fabric, I do highly recommend making a mock-up and checking the pattern and making sure that it's suitable for you. You can of course adjust the pattern as needed. You could make the dart smaller on the bodice or even take in a little bit more room. You could add a little bit more room or distance on that center front um, or even scale it up or down. 
Again, I do just recommend making a mock-up and then tinkering with it till you find a suitable fit for yourself. And one final thing that you could alter to your preference is the sleeves. You can extend them a little bit for a longer sleeve or shorten them a tiny bit. Another thing you could do is give it a rolled edge for more of a flutter sleeve or add elastic at the bottom for an easier puff sleeve. I've included this diagram to create the other style of skirt in the PDF for you as well. But all you're going to be doing is creating these long tapered rectangles and sewing the edges together. Of course, you'll want to extend the sides and the back pieces if you want a train. And then all you're going to do is attach it the same way you would the circle skirt to the bottom of the bodice. For this dress, I will be making it with a circle skirt for the bottom. Because the circle skirt is so long, you have to make it out of two half circles. So I start by folding my fabric using its full width, and I kind of make a square that is 55 by 55. Then I take one corner and pull it up and sort of create a triangle out of that square. Once everything is smoothed out, I go ahead and measure and mark my waist radius measurement, which is about seven and a half inches. And then from that measurement, I measure out the full length of my skirt, which is about 49 inches. I do recommend making your skirt as long as your fabric will allow it so that later you can go back and hem it to an acceptable length. So from that top corner point, you're going to measure out in a few places your waist radius measurements and then cut it with a slight curve to it so that when you open it up, it has a circle shape. And from the ending of that waist radius measurement, measure out the full length of your skirt as long as you can get it. Once you have your first half circle cut out, you're going to refold up your fabric and rinse and repeat, and you will be cutting the second half circle to make a complete full circle skirt. You can, of course, try to cut your second circle skirt a little bit longer and then later hem it up for more of a train effect. But again, I do recommend saving all that last cutting and hemming till the very end when you can try it on. I did a little bit too much tweaking at this state, that's why I say it might be better to save a lot of those big chop decisions until the end. If your dress isn't the same measurements as mine, I do recommend looking up a circle skirt calculator online. And once the skirt pieces to your dress are cut out, you can go ahead and use that remainder of the fabric to cut out the pieces necessary for the bodice and sleeves of your dress. You will need to cut out two copies of your bodice on the fold as well as four different pieces for the back of your bodice. That way you have enough to line it. You will also be cutting out the sleeves left and right and two bands of fabric that are as wide as your upper arm measurement plus an inch or two. This will be the band for your sleeve if you don't opt for elastic. Now we can go ahead and start assembling the bodice. The first thing we're going to want to do is measure and mark our darts and get them all to match as closely as possible. If matching the darts on your lining to the darts on your bodice is too intense, you can leave the darts on your lining off at this point and we will come back and add them in later. I used a light colored marker and on the wrong side of my fabric marked the full triangle of my darts including the points of the triangle for the dart. Once the darts have been marked, you can go ahead and sew them in. Some people like to pin them in place and then sew the darts. I like to match the two bottom corners of that triangle up to that top peak of that triangle and just sew the dart in by hand. This of course is up to you. When sewing my darts, I sort of match up the bottom of the triangle to itself and make sure the end of the dart is at that peak of the triangle and just lower my needle down into the fabric and then stitch a straight line tapering off into the very top of the dart. Now that the darts have been added, we can go ahead and add the back pieces to our bodice. 
following that side curve of our bodice piece, match up the curved edge of the back piece. You can pin these in place if needed and then give it a nice stitch down. Now this is totally optional, but between your two bodice pieces, you can decide which one is less cute. And that one you will be turning into your lining. All you're going to do is fold up that bottom edge and straight stitch it down. Next, we're going to stitch our shoulder strap pieces together. Match the front shoulder strap to the back shoulder strap and stitch it together. Try to keep the seam allowance even on all four. Next, we're going to make our sleeves so we can attach them to our bodice. First, we're going to take our sleeves and gather up that bottom edge so that it is the same length as that cuff piece we cut out. You can give the bottom of that edge a straight stitch on a really long setting and then pull that thread to gather it up. Once the bottom of your sleeve has been gathered to the same length as your cuff, you're going to take that piece of fabric that is your cuff and match it pretty side of the cuff to the wrong side of your sleeve. Then you're going to stitch that gathered edge of your sleeve to the edge of that strip of fabric that is your cuff. And go ahead and give it a zigzag stitch too to secure it. You can now pull that cuff fabric from underneath your sleeve. It's going to look like this. You're going to fold that edge of the cuff over two times so that the pretty side of the fabric is laying over top the gathered edge of your sleeve. This is a great way to finish the edge of your sleeve and cover all exposed seams. You're going to want to fold over that raw edge of the cuff fabric two times and lay it over top the exposed edge of those gathers and just pin it in place and work slowly and carefully as you go along making sure that your fabric doesn't get twisted or warped. Once you've pinned everything in place, you can go ahead and top stitch that cuff down which will secure it in place. You can also give that edge a quick press if you like. Now let's finish off our sleeves with an enclosed seam. Start by matching the wrong sides of the sleeve together and then straight stitch it down. After you've straight stitched it, you can trim the seam allowance to be a little bit shorter and closer to that seam. And then you can turn it inside out and stitch it one more time. That second stitch will enclose the seam allowance sort of in a pocket and it's going to enclose and cover all those raw edges. Now let's attach our sleeves to our bodice. Start by matching that back seam of your bodice to that back seam of your sleeves. And remember, we want that long skinny part of our sleeves to wrap around towards the front of our bodice. As you match the sleeve to the bodice, use pins to keep everything in place. Work slowly and keep the sleeve and the bodice pinned flat against one another. Now from your shoulder strap seam, measure about six inches towards the front. This part is where you're going to be putting all the gathers for the top of your sleeve. As you can see, the rest of the sleeve is pinned flat against the bodice armhole, but that top six inches from the shoulder strap seam towards the front of your bodice is where that leftover sleeve bit is going to be gathered up and attached. So what I like to do is start by straight stitching all of the flat pieces first. And then once I have all of that stitched down, I just readjust it and go to the top bit and put the bodice piece down against the machine and the sleeve part on top and use my tiny scissors to kind of force the gathers. And here is a second look as I match up the other sleeve to my bodice. Again, I just start by matching up the seams, the seam of my sleeve to the seam on the back and side piece of my bodice. And I work around pinning everything flat against one another, except from the top 
shoulder seam and then down about six inches towards the front of the bodice. And here you can see is a closer look of those matched seams on the back and side. And then that six inch little gap on the top of my shoulder strap where I will be putting all of those gathers of the sleeve to create that puffed sleeve. And once you have your sleeves stitched to the armhole of your bodice, we can move on and start making the skirt for our dress. So I just opened my circle skirts up and then matched the side edges together, pinned them in place, and then stitched down the sides. Because the edges of my skirt were cut on the selvaged edge, all I had to do was give it a nice straight stitch and then I pressed it open. And right now it looks fine, but for whatever reason down the road it starts puckering and being fussy. For the next bit, I put a pin on the skirt to match the center front of the skirt and the center back. And then I matched the center front of the skirt to the center front of my bodice and started pinning in place, working around until I got to that very back side seam. That's where I'm going to start adding pleats. Everything else through the side and front is pinned flat against itself. And I just folded in that remaining bit of fabric into pleats on the back of my dress. Now it may take a couple tries to get those pleats how you want them, but once everything is situated, you can go ahead and stitch the skirt to the bottom of your bodice. Now let's create a clean neckline by attaching the lining slash facing of our dress. Start by pinning all along the neckline the lining to the bodice. I like to start by matching the center fronts together and working around with pins matching everything very carefully together. You will be pinning the bodice to the lining pretty sides touching. And once you have finished pinning everything together, Go ahead and stitch. Stitch along those back side pieces of your bodice all along the neckline and just be very careful to make sure that everything is matching and that there is no wonkiness happening. And then you can go ahead and stitch the lining to the bodice. And after stitching it, go ahead and use scissors and clip a few notches into it. This is going to help that neckline lie a little bit smoother when we turn it inside out. Now you can turn it inside out and give that neckline a nice crisp press. And now we're going to finish the lining and hide all of our seams. This part can be a little time consuming, but it does make a very clean and beautiful finished product, so I highly recommend doing it. What we're going to do is fold the edges of our lining over and then hand stitch them to the seam allowance of our bodice underneath. Of course, the bottom of our lining has already been folded under and straight stitched down, but we will be folding under the edges of our armholes. So what I like to do is start by matching up the darts together and any seams, just making sure that everything fits quite comfortably together. It's really good to check it on a mannequin or possibly do it on yourself if you can. Just making sure that there isn't warping or twisting as you hand sew these pieces together. And then yeah, you're going to work your way around the under bust of your dress as well as both of the armholes. And you're just going to carefully hand stitch the edge of your lining to that seam allowance of your dress underneath. You're going to want to push the seam allowance up towards the lining and that's just going to create a very nice clean finish as well as hide any edges, any seams. This is also the point if you were not able to add the darts to your lining earlier that you can hand fold in the darts to match your bodice. As I mentioned, this part can be a little time consuming since you do want to work very slowly and carefully, 
and please use pins to kind of hold everything in place or check it as you go. And once you're happy with how everything looks, all that's left to do is give the bottom of your dress a trim if needed, a rolled hem if you like. And then of course, I just hand stitched on some hooks and eyes to the back of my dress. And thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked this video and want to see other fun DIY videos, please like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.